All right, everybody. Um, this video is going to introduce you to the different types of chemical bonding that we learn about in chemistry. I just kind of want to go over the basics and then do a couple example problems of each category for you so that when you do get to the point of trying some of these problems on your own, you feel comfortable. So the first thing that I want to kind of go over is the difference between an element and a compound. So an element is something that is made up of only one particular type of atom. So this could be something that is from any one of the boxes on the periodic table. And just kind of messing around with my color scheme here. Um, to give you an idea, some of those elements can include carbon, nitrogen, helium, etc. So any one of the elements from the periodic table you can think of as one singular element. Now a compound is a little bit different. A compound is when you start to put two or more of those elements together. So here in the middle we have an example of uh, carbon dioxide which is combining both the carbon element and oxygen element as well as water. So that would be H2O. There are two hydrogen uh, atoms and one oxygen atom and together those are two different elements combining. So if you look at the periodic table, if you haven't bookmarked one for yourself or printed one off for yourself, any one of these individually is considered an element and when you start to combine them you get compounds. Now they actually behave a little bit differently when they are by themselves versus when they are combined together. So just kind of understand that they might behave differently chemically uh, as well as maybe look differently um, when you start to put them together versus when they were by themselves. Now on this slide we're going to get to the point of just kind of differentiating the two as best you can. So looking at that very first example, CO. Well, CO, if you come over to the periodic table, you would look for CO. And one big indicator that it's an element by itself is that it had a capital, here it is right here, cobalt. It had a capital C and a lowercase o. So that usually indicates if there's a capital and a lowercase that it's really just one element by itself. Um, when you have multiple capitals, that's an indicator that there are two or more elements. So if I go to the point of being able to write on this slide for you, um, I would just write E for element or C for cobalt uh, or so on, or excuse me, compound, not cobalt. Uh, the next one has calcium and chlorine together, so that would be considered a compound. And we'll learn about how to name these, how to read them, and all of that. That would be considered calcium chloride. CSOH, this is actually three different elements together, so that would be considered a compound. For D, you have Br2. So Br is bromine, and there are two atoms together, but because it is the same element, or two atoms of the same element, it's just considered an element. In order to be a compound, you have to have different elements coming together. So then this would be a compound, sodium and bromine. Coming over, we have silicone and oxygen. Um, here we have uh, phosphorus and fluorine. Um, here, again, similar to bromine or Br2, P4 is just four atoms of the same element, so it would be considered an element. And then this would be a compound, and this would be an element. So I hope that that kind of clears up the distinction between the two as we move forward. Uh, okay, so moving on, how do compounds actually form? Well, compounds are created by the interaction of electrons. So this is where we have to actually get into what's going on when two elements get near each other and what is happening with what we call valence electrons, which are the ones that kind of hang out on the outside of an atom. 